All right, you guys, welcome to La Pifa. Let's talk. We appreciate you guys for joining us. I just want to kind of talk a little bit about understanding the opposite sex. The question that I have is, what do men desire in women? What do men desire in women? Tawana? I, th- I think this question is so funny because I feel like I cannot even like realistically answer this. But I'll tell you from my experience what I think men desire, okay? So like, I believe they like affirmations. And I'm saying that in a nice way. I feel, I really feel like they want their woman to kind of treat them like a king and put them on a pedestal. But I'm going to say, you know, affirmations is number one. I think that they like nurturers because a lot of men need, you know, uh, that support. They need that woman to believe in them. They need that woman to take care of them. Um, and this is just my experience with men. They like passionate women. And I'm saying that in a very, um, I don't know. This is what they desire. I, I will say like passionate women and you know, they, they, you know, they like them a little freaky woman, but they want her to be, you know, uh, freaking, you know, freaking private, right. And in public, they want her to present to be some, uh, another, a lady, I guess. Um, and then men like physical attraction, but it just, I don't know. Like, I feel like men need more than that or desire more than that. Like they desire support. They believe they desire somebody to believe in them, you know, but in, you know, most of the things that I've observed, these are the types of things that men desire in women. And these are the types of things that attract them to women. So that's my experience. Okay. I know it's kind of I know it's kind of odd starting off with the women, but I <laughs> yeah, because I'm like I, probably, yeah. I don't know. I guess that's what y'all like. Hey, I don't know what y'all like. No, I don't, I don't, I like hey, I'll just observe it. I'll just wait. I'll just sit back. Like <laughs> oh, okay, that's that's what we want. Okay, that's what that's, but that is what y'all that is what y'all end up getting. I was just I was just curious about like I wanted to really you to unpack a little bit more about the passionate piece. Like I felt like there was a, like another layer to that. Because that, that I was really like wanted to say porn. Or something else. I, I really wanted to say porn stars. Y'all want a woman that's okay. oh, oh, yeah, that's 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 a porn like, star. <laughs> that's what the air quotes was for. Okay, thank you for unpacking that. For yeah, me. but you know I said passionate to just be a little bit more politically correct. But I feel like men are really particular. Like y'all want us to be chefs. I say nurturer because I was trying to be nice. But really, y'all want us to cook and clean, be your maid, do this, you, you know, nurturing things. Y'all want a woman that's real freaky, but she, she, you know, but she knows how to be classy in public. Like y'all have a lot of different requirements that are superficial, in my opinion. But, but I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm really sure it. they're superficial. They really won't sustain you in the real world. Like they will get you through the relationship for the time being, or even get you to the relationship. But that woman won't be able to sustain you if she just have those skills. But that's typically what y'all look for. Sorry. That's just what I think. Okay. Yashi, in your personal, yeah. in your personal experience, mm-hmm. what do men desire in women? This is a very, this is an interesting question because, and I, I'm with her. I'm surprised that we're getting this question first because I feel like truly only a man can answer this question. And I have a question, like what are, when we talk about men, we're talking about heterosexual men or we're talking about blanket all men. And are we talking about age? Like, are we talking about age of awareness? Like, what are we talking about? Because men need what they need at the time that they need it. Just like women need what we need at the time that we need it. I don't think that it's, I don't think that there's a blanket over what all men need because every man is different. Like, of course the easy answer is, of course a man want a beautiful woman. Of course he wants a woman that's on top of her stuff. Of course he wants a woman to be her, his peace, be his peace, be his peace, be his peace. He wants a woman a freak in the sheets and all that, but that's not, I feel like that's all superficial. A man wants what the, the same thing that I believe a woman wants. We want honesty. We want somebody that we can talk to. Y'all want somebody that y'all can talk to. Um, I believe that, um, in general, men want somebody that they can that they can trust with their emotions because men can be very, you know, you like men are 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 kind of like raised to be kind of like tough for the most part. I mean, there's not a lot of outlets emotionally for men sometimes. Um, I think in relationships sometimes because you guys have just like with women, we're supposed to be soft and all this stuff. And I feel like men sometimes um, 
if he doesn't know himself, maybe he wants the superficial thing. So I think that um, it depends on where this man is in his life. Is he a young man? Is he, is, how old is this man? Um, but nurturing is what women are. Um, we can fall into our stereotypical roles, but I don't think that that's what men want. I think men want what every man wants is communication, is, is understanding, is um, somebody that's not just about all, because some people think that men, I found that in my own personal experience is not all about the physical, like, because a beautiful face, uh, all of that, that's fleeting. Anybody want that, you know what I'm saying? But I think personal connections, you know what I'm saying? And then it depends on what does that man have going on in his life? He wants somebody to match his fly. He wants somebody that fit his lifestyle. Um, just like we want somebody to fit our lifestyle. And I think that sometimes we can be impatient with that process. Men can be impatient with that process. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's, it's a process and I think it depends on where this man is. And I think it's more of a conversation. So I wanna know what y'all think, because that's what I think. I think it's, it's, it's a lot, it's levels to it. You know what I'm saying? Like where is this man at? Levels to it, like, okay, it's no. levels. I really All right, like, I, I like respect that. that. Yeah, me too, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but before I asked the men, I just wanted to get the men's thought as far as what the women said. You know, do you guys agree? How do you guys feel about what Tawana and Yashi has said? Be next. Uh, I don't disagree, but you know, of course, I'm all about, you know, uh, equitable treatment and approach. So I'm going to say that what they are asking, it's the same thing, it's to reciprocate it. You know, I don't disagree with them, but we all got our own per personal preferences. You know, some people are in the skin tone, some people are in the height, some people are into like a uh, body size type things like that. But that that to each his own. I mean, I think that yeah, of course we all want someone that that's a, attractive, but we all got a different definition on what we define as attractive. You know, so I think that really just um, my first thing would be I agree with it, and a summation would be someone that's confident. I want I want a confident woman. I don't, I don't want anyone that's, that's insecure, that, that really hasn't defined themselves. Cause even though, you know, when we think about confidence, we think about like how someone looks like Yashi, you mentioned about just, you know, the superficial stuff, right? I feel like we couch it and we leave it there. The thing is, if we dig in deep, confidence really is how you command the room, how you command respect. How do you provide the space to provide an opportunity for us to communicate as, as adults? So the thing is, for me, the main thing, I think you got to be confident. And in all honesty, both men and women, there's a lot of people out there that don't know who they are. And they're staying at this very shallow surface level as far as what they think they have to be or have to act. And they get exposed because that level of confidence really goes back to how you carry yourself. And that's the part I feel that makes it sexy, not the fact of necessarily how you look, but how you carry yourself, how you carry a conversation, how you handle your business, minus me. The thing is, at some point in time, you know, whether you get married or not, I always look at my partner, that's my better half, my complimentary piece. The, the, the areas that I'm weak at, you fill in the gap that you're strong and vice versa, because as a unit, we're sharp. I need somebody that is a good complimentary piece. And in order to be that way, you got to be adaptive, flexible, and confident. So I think for me, those are like off the top of my head, adaptive, flexible, and confident. Nice. And not just in a physical way, <laughs> jokingly speaking, but just in, in many, many aspects, the, the layers to that. That confidence is key. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's key. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hope you can help you ladies taking notes. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I, hey, I, Anton I, ain't spoke I, yet. I, I know. I know. Anton I, ain't spoke. I know. I know. I, I know. stopped. I stopped, but I I could continue and say absolutely <laughs> confidence. I mean, but I was I will agree with you. Like I feel like when we talk about what men want, like I don't want to you know jump ahead, but I feel like you know you need to have a knowledge of self before you even want anything. So that's why I'm like, what type of man are we talking about? Because if a man don't know himself. How the hell he gonna know what he want? He don't know what he want. He don't know. He may want something based on an issue, an issue. And it's like, no, that's not, that's, you You will need what you need in a relationship. You need somebody to, to fit your needs and match you and all of that stuff. But you also gotta work through your shit and women can't be the outlet. We can't all be each other's outlet for the pain. So I feel like 
you know, that, that, you know, the peacefulness, somebody who is confident, somebody is all that, but that's like such a woman who is really self-aware. I feel like that's what men need. That's what men need. When people talk about power relationships and all that stuff, I feel like a man truly needs a woman who is very, who knows herself completely, who is aware of, of herself you and aware what? of her emotions and know how to control her emotions. You know, one thing I'm going to just personalize, this is me. And I know Tawana, you had mentioned this earlier about, um, or I think Yashi, I think Yashi, you mentioned the term soft. And I think Tawana, you mentioned the nurturing. Yeah. You know what? That's not really high on my list. No. I don't want nobody soft. I want somebody that, hey, is a trooper, a rider, somebody that's in the trenches with soft? me. You think nurturers huh? are soft? Yeah, like when I say soft, a softness is something that's, yeah. a softness is a woman that is, aware of herself softness is sexy I like if you don't want that what type that. of like, I what type of self is more docile that's how i that's that's a, that's a mind thing no that's but i do think word. i think the word soft is a negative word I, that's why i say nurturer or i try to define the action and i don't yeah. say Gentle. Oh, maybe it's I'm not sorry. a nurturer. Gentle. Gentle. Okay. Gentle. gentle is great because actually, gentle. gentle is a part of a feminine characteristic in yeah. women. And, and I'm not are, saying I, I'm be. not saying I want nobody that's gonna like just knock the shit out of me or whatever. <laughs> but the thing is, like, you know, somebody towering over me. But well, I, a I, woman I, who knows how to be soft, who's an alpha, most women are alphas. Women are we really do know our shit. Like a, a, a strong. Oh, don't bring woman. up alphas. Here we go. Listen, Listen, uh, listen, listen, listen. There is a balance. When you talk about having a woman that's a strong woman, she got a little bit of alpha in her because she got to know how to eat in this world. By hey, Yashi, herself. can I can I stop? Can I stop you there? Just because I, I want an What's interjection. Up? What's up? Okay, so since we're going with alpha, how do you define beta? How do I design? I mean, define, define beta. If we're thinking about an alpha individual, <laughs> alpha <laughs> woman. These labels, mm -hmm. they just. <laughs> then how do we define somebody that's not an alpha? That they're like a a, a beta. Okay. A, a, a person that's self-aware, a, a less self-aware. To me, an alpha woman is somebody who's aware. It's not about being like, I'm stronger than you. It's not about that. It's just about knowing who you are and owning your power. Somebody who's a beta is somebody who's less self-aware, who doesn't know the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Don't know themselves um, and may not, may not, may not, um, an alpha person owns their self. They own all the decisions. They don't put it off on nobody. If I make a bad decision, I made that bad decision. I own my shit is somebody who owned their shit and doesn't doesn't you know put it off on somebody else as they did this to me or this or that that's a an alpha person is a person who knows how to self reflect you know look inward and outward who knows how to be a student and be a leader that's an alpha that's a leader I appreciate an alpha that. is just a leader that's and the it. thing is Yashi I appreciate that and the thing is is thank you for that but that's a jab at my at my colleague over here, Anton. I know he hasn't spoken yet, but I'm trying to get in a few I jabs now face. before he gets started. I see started. his face. I would love to know what he what what's on your mind. All right, brother. Mind, I really Anton. could care less, but unfortunately, <laughs> I have to listen to him on the show. <laughs> All right, brother Anton. Uh, I first want you to give your thoughts on what the young ladies uh, spoke about just now, and I also want to ask you that same question: as what do men desire in women? I think that everybody just went into a big circle and they gave a, a whole lot of, <laughs> they gave a whole lot of answers that can be modified to be whatever it is that we want it to be, depending on what it is that we talking about. It's almost like it's left up to interpretation. Like what is soft, right? Is soft pertaining to personality or their, their ability to be submissive or a soft, more physical. You see what I'm saying? So it was almost like a lot of stuff was said, but it wasn't a whole, it's, it kind of reminded me of church. You know, when you go and like the preacher preach really good. And then like, when you leave church, you're like, dang, so what am I supposed to do this week? Like, I don't know what the heck was just said, bro. You know what I'm saying? But if we want to just get, be very direct on, on what men want, and again, it's con context matters, right? Because there's a difference between alpha men and beta men. It's a very clear difference between the two. And both of them are looking for something completely different. Beta men are looking to be validated. It's the reason why they chase, chase women in general. 
alpha men understand that you don't have to chase women. It just comes with who you are and what you've developed yourself to be. So if we speak it from the perspective of an alpha man, number one, the highest thing that a woman can add as far as value to an alpha man's life, the first thing is them being attractive. You have to be attractive. And that's not just physical. It's attractive mentally. It's your ability to communicate. It's your ability to show yourself to be on my level when I take you places with me. Are you on the same level as the person that you're looking to attract? And vice versa. But we're not talking about women right now. We're talking about men. What men want. First, you have to be attractive. Are you feminine? Are you beautiful? Are you elegant? Like all of these different things are very high on the list of a person that has high value from a men's perspective. Again, because men look at how women look. Women most of the time look at what men have. If we want to just get right down to the details. The second thing is your personality. Are you kind? Are you adaptable? Are you lighthearted? Are you always confrontational with everything, but then you disguise that as being very uh, a person that communicates really well. Like just because you talk a lot, don't mean you communicate. So you got to throw peace in there. You know what I'm saying? So you can learn how to communicate. You can say anything to anybody if you say it the right way. So there's a difference between communic effective communication and just talking a lot. Your presence, how do you make people feel when they're around you and, and, do people feel empowered as a result of you playing a role in their life? Or are you just there to take up resources? And that's why the one of the biggest things that wasn't discussed, and I think that Yashi hit it a little bit, but I think one of the biggest things that wasn't discussed is are you whole before you come into the relationship? I don't want to fix anybody. Can you define that a little bit more for us? You said what? Can you define that for us a little bit more? So I don't want to fix anybody, right? And the thing that I hate when people say is, is this 50-50, 60-40, 70-30? No, we're going to be 100-100, and then we're going to enhance each other as we go along. I don't need anybody that's less than, and if you're a little bit off, but if you got issues and you're looking for validation through me, that's one of the most unattractive things that I can think of from a man's perspective. I need you to be 100% whole. I'm going to come 110% and then we're going to enhance and, 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 and create value within each other because we're stronger together than we are apart. We, we're probably really great as individuals, but we can be a, a powerhouse together. So that's what men are looking, high value men are looking for. They're looking for women that can add value and that doesn't necessarily have to come in a, in a form of money. It don't have to come in a form of a job, but are you the type of person that can enhance what I already have and add value to my life and vice versa. That's what real high value men are looking for. You ladies have some response to that? I mean, I agree. Like, I think if that's what you say, if that's what you want, absolutely. That's what, there's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I think that that's, that's um, what a man- I like you already. You know, but at the same yeah, time, I slightly you know, disagree with you already, but I'll table it for later. After I mean, I don't think that that's the thing. It's all individual. You can't really disagree with somebody on this topic. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever is for you is for you. And what's for the next man is for the next man. That's why I'm like, you know, a 21 year old, like what's, what's a, what's a man, you know, what, what's the age of definition of a man? Is it an age or is it age of maturity? Um, because every man is not looking for the same thing. If I'm out here, if I'm a dude and I'm out here living my life and I'm not into that, I won't, I don't want, I'm not looking for, I may not be looking for a woman to be my piece. Or I may not be looking for all the elements that make a woman solid and who a woman, because all those things that you talk about, a woman who is a woman who understands herself will be able to do all those things. It's she will have all those things already. But what are we like? Which men are which? What type of man are we talking about? Are we talking about an involved man, a man who really well, knows what he wants? I think he told us. He said alpha men. I mean, <laughs> okay. he, he, well, he defined it very clearly. I mean, I don't think that you can put men in a box. And if we speak yeah. to Yashi's point, then yes, there are men. That's great if that's what he wants and that's what he desires. And I think that that represents him well. I don't think that 
that's fair to put on every man because as B. Nick said, he doesn't need a nurturer. He doesn't need certain mm -hmm. characteristics and some physical attraction to him is differently. And so I feel that explanation. And, mm -hmm. obvi and obviously based on my experience as a woman, you know, dating men, being around men, I hit every nail. They want physical attraction. They want mm -hmm. all these things. And that is what, if you combine a combination of men, these are the types of things that they have required from me in the past. And mm -hmm. I forgot to say the, the confidence that B. Nix mentioned, because I think that's mm -hmm. key. Um, yes. And it also aligns with what Anton is saying. As far, just being self-aware, just knowing who you are, mm -hmm. being confident in that, and being able to present that to a man, because that is attractive to men. Yes. Men, I was, you know, I, I, I think, just in my experience, I just think that a lot of men respect those values in um, women in general. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, you know, I agree with what she said. You can't really tell people. I think they right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what they want. I, I'm in support of that, but I think Yashi brought up a good point. Like when we first kicked this off, which then in return is why I slightly disagree with what Anton mentioned about this this being whole, right? Because Yashi, you mentioned earlier about almost like what stages we are in our life, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I can't necessarily even attest to me saying that I was whole, or am I even whole now? So right. the thing is, I know knowing how Anton thinks, Anton is going to look at it like, well, you're not equipped to be in a relationship. That means you need to be focused on being whole first before you get into a relationship. My thing is that, A, life is about trial and error. You have to be able to figure it out. So the thing is, we have to go through this journey, this process to figure out on being self-reflective, how we become whole. Anton looks at it that we're just born with these abilities to become whole. And if we're not whole, you need to figure out a way how to get whole. So in the meantime, I'm still trying to date somebody. So the thing is, I'm still, I need to explore experiential learning. That's how you're able to learn by exploration. So for me, I think it really, the variable that kind of is a moving target is really where we're at in our life in particular stages. And I don't want to marry that necessarily to age. I don't think age has nothing to do with it, which I think aligns with the confidence piece because it's an aspect of maturity that allows you to be a certain aspect of what you define as confident based on how you reflect on yourself. So okay, can, you be know, seven, can you be a 17 year old? Ain't can you be a 17 year old person that's fully ready to get married? I mean, we've seen it done. My grandfather got married when he was 20. Now, was he a whole man at the time? Define whole man, a whole woman, a whole <laughs> see, person. The, the I don't know, but my, my I've seen it in the past. 19. My granddaddy was 19. But see, we're we taking it out of context because we're talking about a time in which in 2020 is completely different because we're yeah. talking about a time in which people were completely dependent on each other for survival. There were certain things that women brought to the table, especially from a nurturing perspective, from a family perspective. And there were certain things that men brought to the table and they were in it interdependent on each other. And that's why you have seen relationships last much longer. That's why you have seen less children be being born out of wedlock. But we talking about a time in which most children, right? There's a, uh, what is it? 23% of children are born out of wedlock. Most children do not have, you know, uh, households that have both a mother and a father in it and statistically speaking it's a fact there are studies that has been done that children are generally and that doesn't mean that people aren't successful in single parent households but in general people are more successful when they have both parents in a home so to speak to b nix's point it doesn't really matter about whether or not you're still interested in exploring we're talking about people's lives you know what i'm saying so we're talking about you you know going and taking time the most valuable thing that we have is time and you're taking time out of somebody else's life for your exploratory measures and that's not fair to both yourself or them it so depends when we on talk the expectation people, yeah but I was, no, I was it doesn't that it depends on the value about, system it's more about the value, about about value and and well, my right. value system should not be dependent on her value system right no it, I, you have to have the same no now that's you're wrong well, hold on wait, 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 wait. Okay. Let me make my point. Let me make my point. My value system, I don't have to subject myself to less than my value system just because somebody else is willing to entertain it, is what I'm saying. I still have to have a standard and a level that I hold myself to expectation wise that I say, 
I'm not going to play with anybody's emotions. I'm not going to waste anybody's time. If I know I'm not what I'm supposed to be, I'm not going to entertain or sell a dream because that's what we're doing. Don't matter if you do it literally or if you're not, but you're selling a dream because most women go into relationships expecting. They're not coming in wasting time, especially when you're super young. You're not coming in with the expectation of, okay, I'm never going to talk to that person again, but I'm going to spend all my time with them. My point is, is that when you talk about relationships, we're not talking about a fling. We're not talking about a thing. When you're talking about a relationship, you're building, you're connecting, you're, you're entering one another. Your bodies, when a man goes into a woman's bodies, like people take that out of context and just think it's just sex. It's more than just that. It's a bigger thing. So when you start connecting with people on that level, you're, you're interfering with whether or not they're going to move in a certain type of direction based off of your interaction with them. And that's why it's important to be the best version of you that you can be in order for this thing to be the best thing that it can be. We can't keep wasting time talking about, okay, but I want what I want. It's not about what you want. It's about what's best. It's people chasing happiness, but they shouldn't. They should be chasing growth because happiness is subjective. And so many people are so focused on what they want instead of what's best that they don't get to be the best version of themselves because they're too busy lowering the standard based off of what their desires are instead of what they should be doing that, you know, to make themselves the best version of themselves. People are wasting people's times and it's not fair. It's not fair to the other person that you're talking to. And it's not even fair to yourself if you value yourself on that level. And that's why I say it's a difference between high value men and betas. Betas are looking to be completed and high value men generally add value to whomever is in their circle, whoever is in their atmosphere and whoever is in their life. They make the lot, their lives better. That's just the truth. He told us. Y'all listen to me. Y'all listen to me. Y'all listen to me. I heard you over there getting extra passionate. I'll let you talk. You did that. Yeah, I thought you were about to try to come through the camera and stuff, man. (laughs) Tell them why you mad. I was like, who who are you talking to? I was like, who's going to argue with that? Uh, Hold on. Hold on. Y'all should. Y'all should. Go ahead. Value is actually very important. Value is definitely important when we talk about, if we're talking about a man and a significant other, because your value system is a huge part of how you move in the world. It's about your morality. It's about how you look at the world. What do you place value on? Do you place value on people? Do you place, and you talk about happiness. Happiness is also very, it's not important to see. You can't seek happiness within somebody else, but you can find happiness with somebody else, but you do have to be happy first. That's one. And then value systems. Yeah, my values, my life values, and I've learned that my core life values have to align with the person that I'm with. Because if we have separate values, that's like two walls. What if, what if our values are not the same? What if we have a separate, like we have to, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna do anything to adjust my values to fit yours. If it's not there, it's not there. But that conversation should be out the gate. That's a conversation that you have initially. Where's your value at? What do you see yourself in five years? Like the real conversations, because yeah, man want a beautiful face and all of that stuff, but you're not saying anything wrong. But there's more, it's, it, it is more to it because your value is, is, is everything. Your value is attached to your ego. Your value is in, in ego drives. Come on, put, put your ego down and see how great the world will work. So your value system is attached to a lot of things. And that's something that people don't put value on in the foundation. And I have a saying that I always say that if the foundation is rock, then everything is gonna crumble. And that's why things crumble because you know what? I may be dating somebody and I may, depending on where I am, I might, what if, what if I'm just out of a relationship and I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for forever. What if, what happens with that? What if I am looking for forever? I need that person to maybe, if I'm not looking for forever, my value system may shift a little bit. I may not be looking for my husband. I might be looking for a fun time. He may be looking for a fun time. Whoever may be looking for a fun time. So when we talk about what man wants and everything like that, it's also about love language. What's our love language? How we how are we communicating? Because at the at the fund, at the end of at the end of the day, people need to communicate, and they don't communicate. They're not honest. You know what I'm saying? People aren't honest about what they really want. They don't even know what they freaking I want. That all the time. I agree. So 
So yeah, the value system is, is way deeper than just that. Cause we talking about, we talking about just the physical value. We talking about the spirit because now when we talk about, you, you got to separate the two. Cause I got my physical self, my physical self may have a different value than my spiritual self. My spiritual self may need to be elevated to something else, but I may not be in, if I'm not in the right alignment, if I'm not happy, if I'm not true to myself, if I'm not in that space, maybe I won't even see that. Maybe I won't understand that. And sometimes you, the sometimes I'm a Christian, and I do love to turn up and drink my wine. But, you know, when your value systems are in the right alignment, when your spirit is in the right alignment, you don't, it's like, it's like the power, um, it's like the secret or the, the, the power of attraction. You start attracting, attracting like things when you don't be like, oh, the value system is just mine and I don't care what you're, no, honey. I have lived, honey. I am done with, fine. I'm done dating men that don't have the same values. We gotta have that in line. If that if that that's a part of the foundation, and if you ain't in tune with that, then you could you, you can't you, it ain't gonna work because when the foundation is rock, everything else when there when there's no when there is no where there's no when the foundation is rock, there will be confusion. Period. At some point, if you go over those fundamental things, so I don't know. That's what I got. I don't know. I mean. <clears throat> Uh, I, I agree. I agree with you know both of your perspectives that you all gave. Um, I I think there's nothing wrong with chasing happiness, man. I feel like it's you know when you remove happiness from it, it makes it feel you know I'm always say it makes it feel like a job, a chore, and these duties that are assigned based on the function that well, you play in our society. Happiness? I mean, what's happiness chasing happiness? Makes it organic. What's chasing happiness? Finding someone to compliment you, to make sure you, you mention it yourself. You feel good being in this person's company. And the thing is, that's the part where I think that we don't want to, you know, make this kind of like, almost like this job description. I get that it's a part of it, but I feel that it should be organic. I, you know, it's like you said, this love language, the power of attraction. It's like this metaphysical energy that you feel that you just love being around this person. But the thing is, and you know, kind of argument to Anton's point is like, that's the thing where people kind of get themselves in the wrong situation because they're chasing this. But the thing is, I know for me, I'm cool with the chase. I enjoy the chase. <laughs> it's enjoyable. It's fun. It's therapeutic in a sense. It's the good, bad, the ugly. Yeah. But the thing is, that's a part of the journey. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that I'm cool with that. And the thing is, going back to value system, hey, I need a complimentary piece. So the thing is, if there's someone, a partner that also is about this journey and wants to participate in this journey with me, that's all I need. We will figure this out. So the thing is, I'm not the same man that I was. I got married when I was 25. Not to say age mean anything to it, but trust, I was not a whole man. I'm probably not this whole developed man now, but I'm evolving. So the thing is, is like, I'm cool with that space my only counter argument to Anton, which I agree with him, but Anton, you always make it seem like it's concrete. Like I already got to have all these things established at the beginning of the conversation. Like this is a negotiation between two individuals for like a, some contractual agreement. I, it's, that's too much. If anything, that's a turnoff. And I think going back to what men want, men don't want all these obligations up front. I think a lot of times we lose people and I've seen it where someone brings to the table, I want to get married, I want to do this, I want to have a house, my first house has to be in this neighborhood. It's like, mm -hmm. whoa, I get all that, but this is like overwhelming. And I think Girl, sometimes when people are their whole person, they almost overwhelm the other person because mm -hmm. I'm there, but I'm not at that level yet. And Anton may say like, well, shit, that's an example why y'all don't belong together. Cool, <laughs> whatever it may be. But the thing is, I don't believe that people are coming just fully as fully developed whole persons in the beginning. But well, sometimes I, people I, don't I agree want. with you. No, I agree with him 100%. We can overcomplicate love and we can overcomplicate these things so much. And we also are too critical of each other and our genders and what we expect. And oh, because you're a man, this is what you expect. And this because you're a woman. And it's really ridiculous because sometimes, mm -hmm. like Yashi said, I want the same things that. 
a man want. Like I want physical attraction. <laughs> I, I absolutely 100% think that's a very, very high. And I mean, I don't call me an alpha woman, whatever the hell you want to call me. But I definitely know what the, I know what I want and what is attractive to me. And so I, I know that, you know, I, I like passion too. I mean, so sometimes men think that women aren't sexual and we don't need that. Like I need that. Y'all think Say that, sis. Say that, sis. Like, yes, I, mean, sis. I just don't know. I mean, I feel like we can overcomplicate it. And I agree with me, Nick. It's like sometimes it's like, I mean, I just want to be happy. I just want to be cool. Like, and I'm not, I'm gonna make mistakes. Like, I'm a crazy, like I may come in this relationship one way and I may end another way, especially when I turn, you know, 25 to 40. Like, I'm gonna be a totally different person. I'm when I'm married at like 23, I was like a totally different person by the age I was 27. And then I moved into 31 and I was like totally different. And now I'm 36. And it's like, girl, <laughs> please, the stuff that I did then, I wouldn't even engage in that. So it's like you constantly growing, constantly. Now, I'm with you on that. And going what? back to I mentioned being flexible and adaptive, I need someone that also is able to evolve and adapt because in life we have some people that don't adapt and the thing is unfortunately we see it people they grow apart we've seen family friends relationships people either grow together they grow apart because as we develop and if we say that we're lifelong learners and we're here for the journey some people cannot change they cannot adapt they're the exact same person that you got when when you first got with them which is cool but the thing is as you begin to change they are not as willing to change and it becomes now a barrier. Right. Now no, you're un you unhappy. That's not true, b -Nix. No, I've said some people don't change. I like don't, some people- I don't agree with that. I think that women- Or they don't want follow. to change. Women love to follow great men because great men- Hey, generally, uh. generally, generally, they exhibit the characteristics that show growth. It shows the right type of growth. Can I interject? Positive growth. And I'm just gonna say this last thing and y'all can say everything y'all want. And I definitely wanna hear from JR, but um, women, listen, women will follow you to the end of the earth, bro. Hey, can we- if they hey, believe in you- Hey, if they, uh, if they, I'm hey telling you know I'm big they, on language. Uh, Why? I don't want listen, no one to listen, follow bro. me. Once listen, again, you, but that's the difference. I need a complimentary individual, should. not and a the very, the very thing, the thing that Yashi really hit on that I say all the time is that people are not absolutely honest with each other from the very beginning. And if you had that conversation, listen, if you the type of person in that specific time in your life that are, that's not looking for a thing, you're not looking for a wife, right? The problem isn't that you aren't in that specific space. The problem is that you're leading somebody or you did not communicate that from the very beginning that that's what your expectation is. So now she doesn't have a choice because people can't always control their feelings. They can't always control whether or not they grow to start really wanting you in a type of way that, you know, she's looking at you from the, from the perspective of the potential of what you, what you could become. And she's attracted to other aspects of your life besides what you, you know, presented to her on day one or your representative, right? And so the problem that I always have is that people are not equally yoked. And the, pro and, and the reason why is so many issues within relationships or people are broken and this person got an issue and this person did that one wrong is because people have different expectations that neither one knows whose expectations is what. And that's an issue. If you gonna be like that, just give them the, and that's why I say it's a difference between having a value. My value system is what it is. I'm going to be absolutely upfront and honest with her about what my expectations are for this thing whether they whether you think they bad or you think they good, but I'm gonna give you the choice. I'm gonna give you the option. And that's the respect that I have for you. That's That means I love you. That means that I really care for who you are and what this thing could be because I don't want you to be anything other than what you wanna be in this situation. I'm giving you a choice. I'm not misleading you. I'm not doing you dirty. And it's just the difference. It's a difference in how people treat other people. And I can always love and treat people with respect whether or not this thing turns into a relationship and grows into something else, or it's just a fling. We both are very, very well aware of each other's intentions from the very beginning. I don't. Th I think that's a very basic thing that we should have for each other is that very foundation of respect. And we don't, we just don't, bro.